A contractual will reflects an agreement between parties to distribute their assets in a particular way. Such wills are most common among spouses. In Garrett v. Reed, we explore what happens if a party revokes a contractual will in an attempt to unilaterally change an agreed distribution plan. When John Humble and Sarah Puffenbarger married, John had four children and Sarah had three, one son and two daughters. Sarah's son, Gary, subsequently died, leaving behind three children. With the assistance of attorney Timothy Fielder, John and Sarah executed nearly identical wills, stating that, aside from one specific bequest, each spouse's estate was bequeathed to the surviving spouse. And upon the surviving spouse's death, the estate was to be divided into sevenths, with one share for each surviving child and one for Gary's children. Upon John's death, his estate passed to Sarah. She subsequently created a new will, revoking her earlier one. The new will stated that Sarah's estate was to be divided only between her two daughters. When Sarah died, John's children sued Sarah's daughters, arguing that the original wills were contractual, reflecting a binding agreement, and Sarah's new will was therefore invalid. They sought a constructive trust on four-sevenths of Sarah's estate. A constructive trust is an equitable remedy that forces the surrender of unjust gains to an injured party. Gary's children intervened in the suit, arguing they too were entitled to their share of the estate. At trial, Fielder testified that John and Sarah intended contractual wills, preventing a surviving spouse from changing the shares designated for a deceased spouse's children, but not those designated for the spouse's own children. The trial court concluded that the original wills were contractual and prevented Sarah from altering the shares for John's children, but not the share for Gary's children. The trial court therefore granted summary judgment in favor of John's children. When Gary's children and Sarah's daughters appealed to the state appeals court, the case was transferred to the Kansas Supreme Court.